Hi, I'm Joe with AWS, and today we're going to be doing some fillet welds using E6010 and E7018 using the shielded metal arc welding process. Before any welding, we want to make sure we're in a safe environment and we're always wearing the correct PPE. Here we're going to start with a lap joint using an E6010 electrode. Fillet welds with E6010. Great electrode. Remember this is a fast freeze type electrode. It's going to penetrate deep into the material. When we're welding fillet welds, we need to make sure that we're maintaining a good tight arc because it's going to be aggressive in nature. It's gonna penetrate really well, which is good, making sure that that joint root is being tied in well. That's one of the key things of this E6010. So this is a good electrode for fillet welds in a variety of positions. Fillet welds with E7018. The E7018 electrode is a great electrode that holds a stable arc. It fills up and it's easy to control. It makes for nice welds on lap and T joints and it's important to remember that this electrode is susceptible to hydrogen or moisture. We need to make sure that when we use this electrode that it's been stored in a rod oven or it hasn't been opened up in an open container. All right, here's the lap weld. Quarter inch thick steel material. I've gone ahead and removed the mill scale. We're gonna weld this with the E6010. To do that, I'm gonna start right off this tack here once I strike my arc, I'm going to maintain about an eighth inch arc length and try to make a circular pattern where I'm going to catch the top edge of that molten pool on the top corner of this plate and I'm going to pull it down into the base plate here into the corner and try to catch the root as well. Always maintain a tight arc length so that you're penetrating into the joint root and ensuring that you're getting a sound weld and these two pieces of metal are going to be stuck together permanently. Here's the T fillet weld. Two pieces of material meeting at 90 degrees. We got a quarter inch. I've gone ahead, prepped it, removed the mill scale, and we're gonna weld this up with some E6010. How are we gonna do that? We're gonna strike this arc off the tack, maintain a drag motion, and really concentrate a majority of the arc right down in the root, and I'm gonna make a slower circular pattern, watching so that weld pool builds up and catches both the bottom plate and the top plate. My work angle, I'm gonna to try to favor a little bit more heavy on this one, and that means I'm gonna probably be about 45 to 30 degrees, pointing it towards the top plate. And we'll kind of see what that looks like when we're done welding. Travel angle, I'm gonna keep it about 30 degrees. And we're gonna make that little circular motion as we move across. The fillet weld with pipe. This is a piece of three inch schedule 40 tacked to a piece of three eighths. I've gone ahead, removed the mill scale. What we're gonna do is we're gonna weld it with E6010. And to do that, I'm gonna strike my arc off this tack and I'm gonna build that weld pool up so that I'm tying in the top piece of the pipe and pulling it down to the base plate. To get the weld pool to lay the way I want it, I'm gonna increase my work angle a little bit so that I'm a little less than 45 and I'm gonna make a little circular pattern moving across. Keep a tight arc. Remember, we're going around a radius here, so we're gonna have to have our body fluid and moving and always changing as we fill up this weld and maintain a nice tight arc. It's gonna be a challenge, but we'll get through it. What we're looking for in a good T fillet weld with the E6010 electrode is a consistent profile, uniform weld size, and we're looking for minimal undercutting to none at all. Here, we look at the toes of the welds. Base material isn't undercut. The profile of the weld is convex. Great, and the weld is centered in the joint root, making sure that it's penetrating into the root and tying in these two pieces of metal perfectly. The fillet weld on pipe. What we're looking for in a good weld with E6010 is a consistent profile. We don't wanna see any undercutting along the toes of the weld on the pipe or the base material. 
We wanna make sure that the weld is centered in the joint root. Looks like we've met all of those here. We also wanna make sure that the weld is consistent in size and we've made that happen. Make sure, this is a tricky weld to do, make sure that you're keeping your work and travel angles in check because that's how you're gonna achieve a good clean weld like we have here today. The lap weld with E7018. We got quarter inch material, mild steel, I've gone ahead, removed the mill scale. To accomplish this weld with the E7018 electrode, we're gonna strike the arc off the tack, which I've already fit this material together. Once we get that arc established, I'm gonna make my motion a very slight side to side, watching the molten pool catch the top corner of the top plate here and trying to uniformly tie it in to the base plate. Making sure I'm keeping a tight arc, I'm gonna come at this with a work angle of about 30 degrees, and I'm gonna come at it with about a travel angle of about 30 degrees as well. The T-fillet weld. Here, we got quarter inch material already tacked together. I've gone ahead, prepped it by removing the mill scale with an abrasive wheel. When we weld, we're gonna be using E7018. Now, I'm gonna strike this arc off the corner here and the tack. I'm gonna to begin to build that weld pool up. Once I get it established to about a quarter inch in diameter, I'm gonna maintain a work angle of about 45 degrees and a travel angle of about 30 degrees. We're gonna make a very slight side to side motion, controlling that arc and watching it penetrating down into the joint root while we're welding. The filler weld with pipe. I've gone ahead and tacked this already. We got three inch schedule 40 to a base plate that is 3 8 of an inch thick. We're gonna be using E7018 to weld this up. I'm gonna strike the arc off a tack here, anywhere you see fit. What we're gonna do is we're gonna maintain a work angle of about 30 degrees, and we're gonna maintain a travel angle of about 30 degrees as well. While welding, it's gonna be a challenge because we're gonna have to weld along a radius. So I'm gonna position my body in a way that I can make sure I can see the weld as I'm moving and my arms are free to make the transition around the pipe. To start, I'm gonna strike the arc off this tack weld and we're gonna build up this weld pool to about a quarter inch in diameter. Once we get the weld pool established, we're gonna maintain a work angle of about 45 degrees and we're gonna maintain a travel angle of about 30 degrees. Now, we're going along a radius here, so we need to position our body before we start so that we are free and we're gonna have visibility while welding. It's not a bad idea to do a dry run or a test run to see if your arms are free to move across the radius of that pipe while welding. The lap weld with E7018. What we're looking for in a good weld is a nice tie-in from the top plate down to the bottom plate, a convex profile. We wanna make sure that the weld bead is centered in the joint root, ensuring we're getting penetration and tying in these two pieces of metal. One thing I would've liked to do a little bit better on this one is maybe hesitated a little bit longer to get a smoother transition along that top edge. As you can see, there's just a little bit of maybe undercut showing here. Slow down correct your work and travel angle, and that should go away. The T-Weld with E7018. What we're looking for in a good weld on the T-Fillet is uniform in size. We wanna make sure we're not getting undercutting along the toes of the weld. Here we have none. We wanna make sure that the weld is centered in the joint root, ensuring that we're getting penetration and joining these two pieces of material soundly. This is a pretty good example and exactly what we're after. The fillet weld on pipe with E7018 electrode. What we're looking for in a good weld is a uniform size. We wanna make sure there's no undercutting along the toes of the weld into the base material. Here we have none. The profile of the weld should be a little bit convex. This is exactly what we're after. And then this weld here is a great example of when you transition across a radius while welding, you're maintaining correct work and travel angles. This is a good weld and exactly what we're after.